one of one of my models was sent by um, Linda from the Queensland Museum um, to Karen uh, Mayerhoff in New York, who was the, the marketing director of business development. And I received an email from Karen uh, asking if I could develop a model of the Guggenheim. Um, five, five minutes, Mark. Okay. So, so working with Karen and the Guggenheim, they, they kindly provided um, background information, drawings, plans, um, photographs. You know, they've got a whole archive of um, footage, photographs um, of the development of the museum. So we use, we use all this as reference. So we, we sit or I sit and, you know, look at the drawings, compare the drawings to what's been built. Um, I had a friend who, well, she's still there in, in Princeton. So she was able to, you know, I sent her on a site visit and she went and photographed every, every corner of the building. Cause typically, you know, you can find photographs of these buildings and the Guggenheim would be a case in point where the photograph you always see is from the other side of the road, looking at one particular corner of the building. You don't see around the back. Um, you don't see the service entry. You know, it's, it's all those bits that kind of add to the, I guess, to the authenticity of, of the model. Um, and the more, the more information you've got to refer to, obviously the better your model can be. And then it's a case of distilling down the information that's in front of you into, into the model and how you do that, what materials you use, um, what thicknesses of material are available. If we click through these, we, we refer to our photographs, um, site plans and drawings, and we work our way through trying to work out um, the, the best way to optimize and create, create our product. You know, there's thousands of, thousands of scenarios or solutions to a problem. Um, and we work our way through and hopefully we end up at the, the optimum um, solution. You know, that's the, that's the spiral on the top, um, which is held together with a, a little piece of acrylic on the back or sticky back plastic on the back. Um, you know, once, once we've worked out how we're gonna do it, how do we translate that information um, so that you can understand it through the drawings, the instructions, and then how do you describe what you've, what you've drawn? Um, how do you package those products? You know, to get it all in the box the same every time. Um, and when you've agreed to make an order of a, I think our initial order was 3000 units that you've never done before. How do you actually implement that? Um, and on an ongoing basis. Uh, so it's, it's been a huge learning curve. And this is, for me, this is still just the start. Um, oh, which I think that was my last slide. So there you can see, I think probably uh, a th the initial order of a thousand units leaving, leaving my house or waiting to be picked up um, by the courier. Um, and I think after packaging and shipping that off, I actually had to go back and unblock my drain. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh no, it wasn't actually that day. It was the day, the day they told me that the product was on sale in the Guggenheim. Um, I was putting a sewer snake down my pipe to, to clean it. So, you, you know, much as it, like it might be the, the most exciting day of my kind of design career, getting your product in the Guggenheim. Um, the reality is you've got to deal with your day-to-day -day stuff as well.